Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Friday. Yay, Friday. <laughs> Glad you've decided to join me again for some more Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead action. Uh, my name is Vormithrax. You can call me Vorm or, hey, that silly guy that uh, doesn't like my gun that I like to use. Either one. All good. What are we doing? Uh, we're still doing our librarian. We gotta finish this challenge up. <laughs> this one's going a little longer than I thought it was gonna take. Mostly due to those uh, first couple of episodes. Uh, it went pretty slow on those. So, I'm hoping to uh, get this one wrapped up. If not tonight, then uh, maybe Monday at the latest. I don't think it'll, it'll go much longer than that. Uh, I think we're at the stage we just basically need to put the library together. Um, and we'll go from there. So, that's kind of the plan. So, howdy everybody in chat. Welcome back. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, so we've got Delia Batty Stallings, our bionic game master, drunk master, dungeon master. And um, if you've been following along with this series, you kind of know what's going on. But for new folks that are joining in late, um, we're playing a six strength, six dex, frail, nearsighted, pacifist librarian. And um, just kind of try to prove a few points and test a few things. Uh, I like to mix things up and see what we can make do with. So I get a little tired of people talking about uh, how important strength is and it's the only stat that means anything and, and all that kind of stuff. So I figured I'd do a low strength, low dex character and uh, see what we can do. And we're also kind of highlighting the ongoing brokenness of the drunken master trait <laughs> by using a frail pacifist. With six strength and six dex, but still killing many, 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 many zombies. So, yeah, a few things we're accomplishing here. We got most of our, our, our bookwork done. Still a few things we're missing here and there that we'll have to track down. But um, the goal of the challenge is to collect at least 200 unique books and get a library set up and defended. And uh, I think we need to get that part done. I need to pull the trigger, make a decision on where we're going to do that. Uh, beyond that, uh, there's not really much else to the challenge I want to continue with, so I think it's time. Probably past, past time. There's our current gear. It's mostly light survivor gear. Because of our low strength, we've got to go with some pretty light gear. And we're having some, some warmth issues. Just, just a set of survivor suit with damn near nothing else on, and we were still massively over... Or, or temperature, I mean, not weight. Temperature problems. We were still uh, really, really warm, taking a lot of speed negatives, so I was not happy with that because we're not even in summer yet, but I'm not sure what was going on with it. Uh, but we adapted, so that's our gear, and uh, mostly right now we're relying on our, our fisticuffs of steel with our steel knuckles and our martial art, and our being really, really drunk really, really often. And uh, then the gun, of course, the, uh, the, the, the M4A1 with five mods attached to it and the 50 uh, round drum magazines that we just picked up here recently. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with that. Um, and we're, uh, we're hanging out here at the military base. If you haven't seen one before, there it is in all its, its glory, the military base. It's a new building, new structure that's been added to the game very recently. I think it's only been in game for like a week. Um, so we wanted to check it out, and we've, we've mostly done so. I finished up most of our, our checking and clearing of it. It, oh man, it was so many zombies. <laughs> With double zombie spawns, this place had so many zombies. And they keep respawning in huge groups. Um, so yeah. But, uh, it's, it's pretty nice. I like the map and all that. My personal opinion, it's not dangerous enough for what's, what it's got inside of it. So... I have a bit of an issue there, in my personal opinion, that I, I think there's just too much stuff here for not enough danger. Um, now that could be just my advanced gameplay ability kind of warranting it, but um, there's no turrets that I've found anywhere in the place. As long as you can get through the minefield and uh, avoid contact with some zombies, or deal with the few you do end up in contact with, there are ways to, to kind of sneak around in here once you know the layout that will get you... 90% of the things you might need in the game in regards to uh, anything soldier related uh, guns, equipment, tools uh, medicine, clothing it's just here in huge, huge supplies so yeah, yeah, I, I do like it but I think temporarily it'll probably go on my do not visit list uh, as I've done in the past a few times, uh, I did it with the initial implementation of the apartment tower and so on 
just because for my personal play, it's going to make the game a little too easy for me. Um, so we, we might poke around at it, especially if it gets some adjustments in that, but uh, I, I'm probably not going to focus on it for a while. Now, I did want to mention a few things, or one thing in particular. I'm going to go back down into the tunnels uh, for the folks that have been watching. Uh, we found the underground tunnels collecting, connecting some buildings. There's one spot that I didn't show that I want to highlight before we take off. I'll just go show it to you real quick so you know where it's at and what it looks like. And uh, then we're going to take off. So we've, we've seen uh, the main armory. We've seen the vehicle bay where all the tools pretty much are located and uh, vehicle materials. We've seen the main supply depot over here. And there's a building up here we briefly popped up in, but I didn't really showcase what it is and why you would go there. So there's there's four buildings that have lots of stuff, and they're all connected via these underground tunnels. So if you can work your way into... I, I think this one would be the easiest one to get into initially, and then work your way through the tunnel system, just based on where the gates are and that. But there's a sequence you can go through where you can pretty much reach everything you need fairly easily. So when we get rolling here in a few minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop out of the vehicle. We'll go look at that one other spot I wanted to sh showcase, highlight, and then uh, then we're gonna get out of here. And we're gonna get out of here. We will uh, head back to our base, resort our gear, see if we have to clear another million zombies from around our LMOE shelter. It's just been <laughs> I don't know I don't know what's happened to Wander Spawns, but it's just been ridiculously nonstop. Zombies constantly, constantly, constantly crowding around my my little LMOE shelter. So, yeah, it, it's it's been ridiculous. But we got to decide on where we're going to put our library. I am not going to put it in the military base for a few reasons. The ones I've mentioned, plus the entire gateway is clogged up with vehicles that are broken down, and I can't just drive into the building I might want to use and back out again. I don't want to go through the hassle on the time frame to move slash repair slash relocate all those to clear away or to blow a hole through the wall to make a route or anything like that. So we're not going to use the base, so we got to pick another location to uh, set up our, our quote-unquote apocalypse library. Um, I don't like the city we're in too much. I'd rather set it up somewhere else, but we don't really have maps locating libraries and other locations other than up here and they're buried pretty deep i think that's nope that's bookstore that's the library nope <laughs> come on there's the library there's one right there we could get to without too much difficulty it's right on the name plate so it'd be kind of ugly uh, none there that I can see. One, is that a furniture shop? That's a liquor store. It's not brown. So yeah, we got to make a final decision on where we're going to actually put this, this ended library. I, I guess technically I could put it right where we started, which was right here on the outer edge down. It's one of the small library buildings, and I'm not too impressed with it. Um... Not that it says I have to use an actual library building. I mean, I could use another structure to uh, stockpile the books if it uh, catches my fancy. I'm not going to use a wizard tower. I'm not dealing with a wizard tower in this particular run. Um. Yeah, well, we'll worry about that when we get to back to base. Let's let's make sure that happens first. Maybe we'll die before that happens, and I won't have to puzzle it out. Alright, so, I don't think anybody's been posting any questions or comments in chat I need to respond to. I don't know the answer to uh, Hector Pie's question. <laughs> uh, collapse Tower Library. <laughs> I don't have any of those nearby that I'm aware of, and no. <laughs> Did I hear some dead guy got banned from the CDDA forums? Uh, of course. I, I spend large portions of my day <laughs> answering questions on all the discords, on all the Reddit channels, on my own YouTube channel stuff. <laughs> I'm always aware of all that kind of stuff. He didn't get banned. He requested to be banned. There's there's a difference. <laughs> so I know the story. I know what happened. I know most of, most, most of what occurred. He's got his own discord now, so he's still working on the uh, the tile set. You can still get it. So don't, don't worry about it disappearing. He's just uh, not going to be present on the official Discord or Reddit pages and so on. Uh, so yes, I did hear. 
Alright. Meteor Zizix. What happened? I'm not gonna go into it. Not a topic for, for me to discuss, really. Just drama. You know, drama. Probably happens. Only thing I care about, and I predicted, is that he is still working on the tile set. It can still be gotten. You just need to go visit his Discord directly. I because th I think the link has changed. I think the mega whatever link might have changed on where he stored it. Uh, so his Discord's the best place to go get that. I haven't updated in the last little while since before that happened. But uh, not 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 my kind of drama to uh, <coughs> to dispense. I stay out of that kind of stuff. All right. <clears throat> so, what are we gonna do? Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run back into the building just so I can show this one last little section. So, as I mentioned, we saw the main armory, huge amounts of weaponry, ammos, explosives, infrared, and uh, uh, low light goggles. So, this is one of the few places in the game now, or maybe the only place, it's gonna be even more reliable to get here than the hunting store. Infrared and light amp goggles. There's literally, a, like, 30 of them <laughs> on the shelves here. There's a massive stockpile of just general military weaponry and tactical gear uh, in this little room. And then this building is the uh, vehicle shop. So you've got a huge selection of tools and equipment, including uh, settling torches and stuff. Um, we saw, we had a uh, welding cart in ours. I didn't see an in Oh, no, there is an engine crane. I missed the engine crane right there. So we have an engine crane in there, and there was also a welding cart. Uh, and then I'll show you up here what this is going to be. And then over here, we have the main uh, stockpile of just shelf after shelf after shelf of clothing, MREs, uh, all sorts of generic items and utility items and so on. Just filling up this whole warehouse. Uh, so we're going to go visit the last spot that I didn't really showcase, and then we're going to take off out of here and never come back. Uh, actually, let me need to make sure of a couple of things. Uh, so I've got the light amp goggles on. And I've got... Where's the infrared? Alright, infrared goggles are in the trunk. And the welding rig in the trunk. Alright, those are the ones I wanted to double check. Alright, let's see if we can get back inside without uh, encountering anyone or anything. Can we get in here? I'm just going to go around where I know I've got an opening. Oh, by the way, uh, for anybody that is not liking the auto activity, where if you have one option, it automatically does it. What I mean by that is uh, uh, various activities now, if there's only one option, one choice nearby, it'll just automatically do it. Like opening and closing doors. If you're standing next to a door and you hit the C key, it'll automatically close it. My mus muscle memory is set to automatically hit the C key and then pick a direction, or hit the O key and pick a direction to open and close and such. And so I'm constantly open closing, closing opening doors, and that's really, really dangerous. There's a few other things that uh, can happen that can be dangerous with that as well. If you don't like that, if you don't want it that way, just go to your options, go to interface, and it is right there. Auto select of exactly one valid target. Turn it to false, and it goes back to the old way. So, uh, newer players probably would like it the new way. That's great for them. But <laughs> for, for us folks that have uh, two or 3,000 hours of accumulated muscle memory and uh, we're constantly picking and accidentally unpicking and picking things, I, uh, for now, I'm going to just turn it off, which is what I've done. So it's back to the old way that I'm used to. Less likely to get me killed uh, when I accidentally open, then close open a door with a turret on the other side and get myself shot. Um, and somebody told me there's a few other actions that can cause issues too, where it automatically moves you a space or, or things like that when you try to do the action with only one choice nearby. So uh, I'll let some time go by, let them sort out some of the issues slash complaints with that before I turn that thing back on again. But there it is. So options interface, auto selective, exactly one valid target. Turn it to false. And you're back to the way things used to be. Alright, so this is the uh, remains of the welding cart we took apart. And uh, we've got an engine crane option. I should probably grab the engine crane since it's foldable. We'll, we'll take that with us when we uh, come back out again here in a second. But you can kind of see what's, what's in here, the scale of things, if you missed Wednesday's episode. 
This is just one tiny section. Um, I mean, there's tools, 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 and more tools, and just just hordes of tools and welding tanks and vehicle parts, plating and frames and so on. All right, we're gonna go down into the tunnels and follow. So let's go ahead and turn on our goddamn oh, goggles. Follow the tunnel section. Still don't know exactly what's behind there, but I'm not that curious. So we're going all the way up to the north room. Alright, so that puts us here. Okay, we have a computer. So we came up the stairs. So you could come right here through this window or door. See this computer in the locked door, and then right around the corner is the stairs into the lower section. So we're gonna we're gonna hack this. And uh, check out what's in here. <laughs> you want uh, you want need medical supplies? There's your medical supplies. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Realize I'm at half item spawn rate. Also, <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure it's obeying it <laughs> in in this kind of a pre setup location. Uh, that's 50 doses of the strongest antibiotic possible. <laughs> oh, man. Three gamma globulin shots. Yeah. Good stuff. That's only that's only the one side. I still haven't stepped across to the other one yet. So if I move over here, we've got uh, this in addition. There's a couple of AEP suits. <clears throat> a fitted one and an unfitted one. So if you want to uh, go and have some fun with an armored environmental protection suit, you have that option. So this is basically, this is the medical wing. This is the medical wing for the base. So I think uh, you got uh, an operating room. You've got uh, patient rooms down this other hallway down in this area. But this is the primary supply spot for it. So you might pick up incidental stuff. I didn't really go looking very much. But uh, I think this is the numero uno spot you would head to in here. But like I said, if you if you know the base layout, and for example, there's a hole in the wall over here, you sneak through the minefield in the dark, go through the hole, immediately beeline straight for this, pop this open, grab every medical supply you might ever need in the entire game. <laughs> I'm not impressed with 195 antibiotics. Those are, once you're past the initial day or two, those are pretty easy to get a hold of. This is the hard one. <laughs> That's the super antibiotic right there. That's rare. Even in regular, in the, the way they've got pharmacy stock nowadays, you don't find them all that often. But, um, yeah, I mean, flu shots, gamma shots, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, so you come in here, you, uh, assuming you have the computer skill or you can get through the door some other way, you, uh, get in there, grab all your medical loot, and just drop down into the tunnel. This is where you'd have a bit of a problem because you can't get, you have to throw this from the other side, so you'd either have to be able to get through the door here or find one of the other buildings to enter through. And I haven't puzzled out the whole path yet, if there's an optimal version. Uh... That one pops up right in the, uh, the the big warehouse across the road. This one also has an interior door that you have to deal with. So this would be the one you would probably want. Yeah, see, this one you have to come through different ways as well. There may be a better way. I I'm not going to worry about it. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's, uh, let's pop back through the laundry room. And I'm going to grab that uh, engine crane on our way out. And we're, we're done. And no, I'm not going to take any of the drugs and stuff. I didn't go there during the regular play. I just wanted to highlight it here. Um, and I, I don't really need stuff anyway. We'll just continue on from this point. Anything interesting like a hack pro in here? That'd be pretty cool. Flip sunglasses. No. No hack pros. No hack bros. Alright, and there may be more cool stuff hidden in the base here and there. We didn't do a 100% clear of the place. But, like I said, it just feels a little too easy for me at this stage of gameplay. Considering what's in this place. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on my off-limits list for a bit. 
Alright, um... <laughs> the engine crane. So, now the problem is I can't get this Humvee out of here <laughs> with, without a lot of effort. All I can do is bring the Humvee down and park it down here, and then I have to transfer all those items down to our, our armored car so we can get out of here. Otherwise, I'd have to uh, dismantle a section of the fencing, fix and move the vehicles. Maybe I could work my, my Humvee through here. If I got rid of those, eh, it might be possible. It'd be close. Yeah, it'd be close. We'll see. Hey, murder dog. Thanks much for the resub. Uh-oh. Remo's back. Either Dwarf Elfish Diplomacy, have you seen my um, Mansion with Z-Level Power video on YouTube? You might want to take a look at that. That kind of details how to set up a base power system, and it even shows how to move power between Z-Levels. So I have a mansion where I've got uh, wind turbines and solar panels outside to lead into the kitchen, downstairs to a, a lower a network in the, in the basement below the kitchen. And uh, the power transfers from the solar panels down into the network. So it kind of walks through it. Might give you some ideas or some knowledge if you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, the uh, the military base needs needs something. Now I did I did a test earlier today just to double check a few things, and it looks like the zombies that populate the base are preset as special sets, meaning even if you have default uh, evolution settings, when you go to the base, you're still going to have black ops zombies and bio operators and things like that, and acid snipers. Uh, those are part of the default set, so they don't need to evolve to those stages. So you will have some fairly tough zombies, and I, I tried to clear this place with uh, uh, double zombie spawns, but... Um, it just still doesn't feel nearly dangerous enough for the level that's here. Same complaint I had with research facility and so on. It's just too much stuff that you can get to without the danger level. And unfortunately, slapping turrets every 20 feet is... I, I hate that answer as a the only way to make it tougher. I, I wish we had other methods or other ways we could do things like that. All right, let's uh, let's get out of here though. I'm I'm sick and tired of this place. We spent quite a bit of Wednesday <laughs> clearing this crazy place. I really like the design though. I like the design. I just think it needs a little more work and some kind of a solution for difficulty. So yeah, I'm wondering, could I actually get this Humvee out of here if I take the fencing down? I could swing around, get rid of that table. I think I could. I think I could make that turn right there. And right through there, we, we might be able to get this Humvee out of here. You guys know I do love my Humvees. All I'd have to do is take the fencing down, but unfortunately we're going to keep having zombies wandering in as I try it. I think I'm going to try it. I, I, can't, I don't really lose anything for trying it. Unless I do get swarmed. Alright, come get me, zombie. Am I drunk? I am not drunk. Do I want to get drunk? I don't want to use my gun, so I better get drunk. All right, come on, zombie. Okay, what are we gonna hit this with? Crash axe is not really a good choice. I don't really need to use crash axe for it. Uh, bash of four. I don't like that either. It's on the ground. Hit it with a flamethrower. <laughs> bash it with a Mossberg. Trenching tool. Bash 10, yeah, maybe an entrenching tool would do.
That fence seems awful fragile for a guy with six strength and a shovel <laughs> to be one-shotting it like that. All right. Um, yeah, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Right after. Move that. Oh. Take it down. All right. Run over that stuff. Run over that stuff. We'll see if we can navigate the corners here. got me hung up on some That's that's some that's some expert level maneuvering right there. Almost like I've done that once or twice. Okay, well that uh, that helps out. Now I gotta decide. Leaving this thing here. How much gas do I have? Plenty of gas. Got the Browning. I already un dismounted the ammo, unloaded the ammo from the M249s. Um, uh oh, who's in the light? Yeah, I grabbed the crane. We've got it. Where'd you go, crane? Right now I'm con I remember grabbing the crane. Where did my crane go? Oh, I brought it back here. Oh, I think I had it on... Uh, yeah, I only had it on one space. So there's the crane. <clears throat> we got the crane, we got the acetylene torch, and we also got the um, vehicle welding rig. And a few books. I'm just trying to decide, do I... I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave the vehicle there as is, with gas. That way I can... I can hustle back down here on like a bike or something, and then drive the armored car back and have it for spare parts if I need it. Yeah, we're about to lose our, our light. Go ahead, light. Alright, let's go home. I'm sick and tired of this place. This is where I get killed by a random shrapnel from a mine. I mean, I, I forget where we started, but... I think we had like a, maybe a thousand or eleven hundred kills when we came to this place, and now we're at sixteen forty-four. To give you an idea of uh, just how much of a mess this place was, and we spent a lot of Wednesday here. All right, we'll just follow the road out.
Yay, Humvee! Not go too close to that uh, nasty NPC that's got the rifle. Eternal question, how many zombies are going to be around the base now? <laughs> Doesn't look too bad so far. That's hard. Oops. Come get me, zombies. Whoa! Excuse me? Well, that got a little more dangerous. Hmm. And I got a bite! <laughs> well, this is a good start. Huh. First zombie I come across, second zombie I come across, give me a bite wound. All right, so my big fear with this character is uh, getting grabbed while there's acid. We already had one really bad encounter with that. Need to pop that acid zombie as quick as possible. We're only tipsy now. And we got zombies pouring in from every direction for the 50th time. <laughs> And they're gonna they're gonna mess with my Humvee. Hmm. Of course my alcohol hit the ground. Um unload there. Drink. Back to drunk, barely. Need to get to that acid zombie. Kill it first. Or I get grab. Right, right. There's the grab. I need him to die before he spits again. Alright, at least we got him down and I got stuff standing in acid which will speed things up. The Thorny Shambler has joined. We're going to take some poison hits. Alright, stupid Dissolute Devourer. Had about enough of you. I love it when it does that. <laughs> it always makes me think I'm a, I'm dead. That something happened that killed me when it auto saves right out immediately after a hit. All right, anybody else for this latest massive pile of zombies? Yes, we do have more. Down in the front of my vehicle. Septic on that. Let's 
Let's make sure to not smash the acid bumpy. Where? Right there. Alright. All the corpses are smashed. I need to clear a path for me to drag items. took a few hits to our torso. Not that I need to worry too much about. I was just deathly afraid of that spitter getting another acid blast off while I was being held in place by a dissolute devourer. That would have been another session of uh, double broken legs. And we got that one happened again. Alright, see some chatting going on. Bungle is more a uh, character or a player experience thing. Bungle's not bad or that necessarily difficult once you know the game a bit. But I do recommend brand brand new players turn Bungle off. But um, once you got a handle on the game, turn it on. They're fun for flavor and for challenge and all that. <clears throat> there are ways to live among them and to deal with them and to avoid them. It takes a little bit of practice and game knowledge. <clears throat> Does loot devour? Are they dangerous? They can be. They can be dangerous. They've got some fun parts to them. One, they absorb nearby zombies. They just uh, grab them and yank them and absorb them into their body, which raises their hit points and um, makes them. I don't know how much stronger it makes them, but um, I've had some over five, five, six hundred hit points. So they've, they've taken a lot of hitting to uh, to knock down. And also, you can never tell what their health status is. They always show full health. Even if they're one hit point away from dying, it'll still always show a full bar. So it's a little hard to gauge just how you're doing in the fight sometimes. You don't know exactly how tough they are. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Thanks, Dwarf, Elf Dwarf Elvish Diplomacy. <laughs> I totally forgot I had the... Keep an entrenching tool in my hands. <laughs> I wasn't even using my martial arts for all that fighting. Uh, that would have gone a lot simpler, a lot faster, if I had uh, not been, been using this stupid entrenching tool. Oh, that's funny. Totally forgot I whipped that thing out to smash the fence. <laughs> ah, all right. So, how am I doing that much damage with it? <laughs> it's because of the Drunk Master trait. That's one of the things I'm demonstrating, is the brokenness of the Drunken Master trait. Hey there, Shadar. Yeah, the, the wiki is, is tough. I have the exact same problem with my educational tutorial stuff that the wiki has, that everybody has with Cataclysm. The game just evolves so rapidly. You can have the best of intentions and update your information in the wiki, and two weeks later it's out of date, and then what do you do? I mean, some people are playing 0.c, some people play 0.d, some people play any of a thousand experimental builds in between. So you can't just delete the entry. You, you have a separate entry for every single stable build and every single experimental build. You append notes to every single change or occurrence. I There's no simple solution to the problem. Um, I have nothing but sympathy for all the people that uh, contribute to the wiki and the documentation and such for the game. I have the exact same problem with my videos. I mean, I make a video on a mechanic and I never know. It could be good for a year, could be Two years could be gone and useless and uh, not be valid a week later. So, and again, I can't just delete the video because it's valid for a lot of folks. just not valid for every single person. And uh, who am I making the videos for? Just the bleeding edge experimental people or, or what? So, 
you just got to kind of grin and bear it, understand the process that's occurring, and uh, adapt as you go along. But yeah, that uh, trying to keep that wiki up to date, that would be a... <laughs> that's a massive, thankless task right there. <laughs> It'd be a little different if it wasn't just a community-driven free game. That, I mean, since there's not a profit stream involved um, to work on it, then it's really, really hard uh, to, to allocate resources and all that when it's volunteers and it goes out of date so quickly. It's really discouraging to have all your work basically no longer valid just as quick as you can make it a lot of times. So, All right. Well, that's okay. Your Uncle Vorm's here to, uh, to set you straight, give his opinions, play some silly video games. So, we're back at base. We got the initial, most latest infestation cleared. If it was daytime, you could see the actual level of carnage that's in this area here. It is just absolutely ridiculous how many times I've had to clean this out. I mean, we're not in the city center. I'm not firing my gun very often, if, if ever. I mean, I think once or twice I've used it for certain monsters, but um, there's no particular reason why I should be experiencing just masses of zombies non-stop. It seems like every single time I come up here, I got a new mass of 20, 30, 40 zombies I've got to deal with. So, something's weird. It's not the way it usually works. I don't usually have this much interference and uh, zombie overflow constantly, but I don't know if something's changed or if just something wacky in this particular game I'm playing. Alright, can I haul this stuff without getting interrupted 14 times? A little easier here at night. <laughs> nope, not gonna make it. Here come more of the random zombies randomly wandering in my random direction. Now that I am using... Oh, I'm still using that stupid tool. <laughs> let's, let's drop that on the ground here and haul that with everything else. Ah. How much, how much stuff we got there? There. 194 liters, 560 liters. Carry eight currently. I drop. Oh, that's right. Forgot to drop my uh, sack. Alright, so we got the bird tactical backpack and the hiking backpack. There you go. <laughs> I think that is a new personal high for Performathrax right there. <laughs> now this part's not impressive. Uh, not even five pounds available weight, but um, almost 200 liters available. <laughs> I find that amusing. Just about get the entire... Oh, we can get the entire stack if I'm willing to, to try to carry 500 pounds. All right, sort this by... Whoops. Sort this by... So, ah, I got a shocker corpse in there. Well, we don't want that. Come here, shocker corpse. Get out of here. Uh, got down in a hundred some. So welding rig. I don't need the bicycle. Welding rig, engine crane, jackhammer. Should have left that train up there. I'm gonna go down here. Silly me. 
that should also stick. What am I doing? In green. Leave the welding rig. I have everything. Gets rid of most. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching uh, Korg's work on the nested inventory stuff. Looks pretty good. My only concern about it when it was originally proposed was just additional micromanagement. I'm just worried that the process of using it is going to be more cumbersome than the benefit it provides. It all sounds great when you think about it conceptually, but when you actually have to start pushing buttons, that's where I get concerned. If, if I'm going to have to spend another... 10 minutes fiddling to get everything into different locations, and then I have to worry about, oh crap, which 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 duffel bag or which backpack that I put this thing in, that thing in. I can't see them from a distance. Because right now, if I just drop everything on the floor, I can see it all from wherever. But if it's all inside of bags and stuff, then it gets a little more complicated. I'm worried. Yeah, only 1,200 rounds. That's that's only the stuff I've actually unloaded so far. Mm, if the turret only had 100 rounds, that sounds like the old-style turrets. That doesn't sound like the new one. Are you running, like, a modular turrets mod, or... There's a couple of the mods that uh, basically keep the turrets the old-style, not the new ones. Even the M2HB, the, uh, the Modus turret has like 600 rounds in it. I don't know of any of the current turrets that uh, only have 100. I guess it's possible if you're in that lab a long time, maybe that turret went through 1600 rounds, but you should have seen 1500 shell casings on the ground <laughs> next to it. That would pretty much answer the question. If there was a, a knee-deep pile of shell casings next to that turret that you got 100 rounds out of, then sure. But, um... If there weren't 1,500 rounds of ammo, there's something else going on. Alright. Um, let's evaluate these real quick. Space carry. Hammer. Um, uh, backpacks. It. These 50 round drums increase my uh, weight by that much.
Sun's getting closer. Seems a little weird. I, I had other clothing on previously. It just seemed to be a little heavier than I'm expecting. Not sure why a from negative way more. And the gas lamp. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, drink. Uh, something going on here on my side. I need to take a real fast break. Right back with you guys. <clears throat> 